What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight! Tonight! Okay. Oh, well, it's... Okay, let's go with that. We'll just go with it as it is. Uh, making their debut on the channel tonight! Tonight! We have Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Yes, indeed. How about that? Richie Blackmore's Rainbow making their debut on the channel. Before we go any further, for those of you who are feeling inclined to do all the clicks and the likes and the bibbity boobity bob, do me a favor. Before you do all that stuff, please watch the whole video first, okay? Give me a chance to actually earn those clicks and likes. Now, after the video's done, if you still feel like doing all those clicks and likes, then by all means, feel free to click away. This comes as a request from Wencho101, and this is actually Wencho101's prioritized request for the month of December for being a Silver Tier member on the Patreon page. So, here you go, Wencho. I hope you enjoy the show, man. Uh, Wencho wanted to see me react to this song by Richie Blackmore's Rainbow called Stargazer. Now, have I heard the song before? Believe it or not, no, I have not. I've never been a huge Rainbow fan. Um, I'm well aware of Rainbow's history. I'm well aware of the um, the impact that Rainbow has had on the world of rock and metal. I mean, look, Ronnie James Dio, what, what more can you say? Um, but if I'm being honest with you guys, there's only two songs from Rainbow I've ever heard that I know of. Uh, that would be, of course, uh, you know, Man on the Silver Mountain. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, anybody who says they haven't heard that song, I, I kind of question them because that song is used movies, television shows, video games, advertising spots, you name it, that song has been used. So how you haven't heard that song, I, I kind of question. But then again, there have been songs from like Pearl Jam that I've never heard before that again, were used in all types of media and I've never heard them before. So I, I guess that I guess I could see it. But yeah, I, I'm familiar with the song Man on the Silver Mountain, and I'm also familiar with the song called Kill the King. Those are the only two songs from Rainbow that I am familiar with. I've never really gotten into Rainbow. I don't know why. I don't know why I've never really given them a chance, but I, I just, I never really dove into them. So, but I have heard of this song Stargazer. I've heard of it. But I've, to the best of my knowledge though, I've never actually heard it but I'm aware of it, the song's existence. Now, there is a possibility, and I, I, I will go even a step further. I will say that there is a distinct possibility that I may have heard the song in passing and I, ju I just don't know it, I just don't realize it. So it's always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, ha ha, time out, I do recognize this song, I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This was posted by Mercury. Is that Mercury Records? Does that mean it's coming off the record label's official page? That could be an issue. And the video has 388,201 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. A link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say, are you ready? Are you ready? Cause here we go. All right, here we go. Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, Stargazer, Memories in Rock. Now, before I push this play button, I'm a little curious, and I'm sure people will tell me in the comments why this is. Why is it Richie Blackmore's Rainbow? I'm sure there is a reason. I'm sure it's some legality over the ownership of the name Rainbow. I, I don't know what the story is there. Um, I, I honestly don't know the story. I don't know the history of Rainbow. So I'm sure in the comments, y'all will let me know, but do me a favor. 
if you are not 100% certain for the reason why, and you don't know the exact like specific, like the exact specifics as to why, I mean, opinions are always cool and all, but, and speculation is always cool and all, but I don't want speculation. I don't want opinion. I want facts. Okay. So please, if you don't know the facts, then don't try to confuse me with conjecture and opinion and, you know, speculation. Give me specifics. Give me facts. Okay. I am kind of curious as to know what happened there. I, I'm, I'm sure there's a legal reason for it. I just don't know what the reason is. Um, yeah. Oh, that. Whoa. <laughs> Almost 10 minutes long. Is the song actually 10 minutes? Or is this a live performance and maybe there's like, you know, extended guitar solos or something? I, I don't know. I don't know. But 10 minutes. Holy cow. Hopefully the time flies. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. Okay, why? It's a really good song. I I'm digging the feel. That kind of laid back in the pocket, kind of laying back on the backbeat kind of feel. I I'm digging that. Um, a lot of unison line work, in particular between bass and guitar, and I believe keyboard is even following as well. Um, gotta be careful with that because when you do that, and you start doing unison lines like that, and everybody's playing the exact same notes at the exact same time, the exact same placement, everything like that, you run the risk of the song at that, at those points sounding hollow. Um, I personally would like it more if it was just bass and guitar doing the unison line and having the keyboard filling out the sound with the chords. I, I think that would, that would definitely help. Um, But it it sounds good though. It, it does sound good. I I it, I'm not saying it sounds bad by any stretch. Um, I get the feeling this song is well known. I, I I'm looking in the every time they show a shot in the crowd, they'll they'll focus on one person. That person is singing, or at least mouthing the words. I don't know if they're actually singing in the crowd or not, but they're at least mouthing the words. So people in the crowd clearly know this song. Was this song a big hit for Rainbow? Was this one of their better known songs? Or is this one of those deep cuts that only like the true fans of Rainbow know? I, I, I don't know. I have no clue. Um, something tells me this is a well-known song. I, I don't know for certain. I don't know for sure. But something tells me this song was a hit. 
I've heard of the song, but I don't know it's standing. Like, if you were to list like a top 10 or a top 20 list of Rainbow songs, I don't know where it would be in that list, if it would be in that list at all. I, I don't know. I'm aware of the song's existence. I've heard of the song, but I don't know if this was a hit or not. I'm not sure. Let's keep going here. Let's see where this goes. Wind moving fast across the desert. As we feel that it's time is around. Warm as being what we could just win together. Our tower of stone can take it straight to the sky. Sounds like we have a guitar solo coming. Let me back up. Hopefully this guitar solo isn't too long. Um, I don't want to have to pause in the middle. Okay. Vocalist. No idea who he is. No clue. Um, I know at one point, Ronnie James Dio was in Rainbow. I don't know when Ronnie James Dio left Rainbow. I don't know the reasons why. He left Rainbow. I just, I know he left. And the reasoning from what I have been told and from what I have heard, the reason he left was on the negative side. I don't know what the reason is, but it wasn't like a, a mutually understood reason. Like it wasn't like everybody was happy. You know, it, was, it wasn't that. It, it was, it was, it was bad. I don't, I don't know what the cause was. Um, and whenever you lose an iconic voice in a band, a lot of people and a lot of bands will try to find a vocalist who sounds exactly like that vocalist. Let me just preface what I'm going to say next by saying this first. There is only one Ronnie James Dio. There will never be another Ronnie James Dio. Like, there will never be another Freddie Mercury. There will never be, you know, these iconic vocalists. There will never be another one like them, okay? Let me just start off by saying that. Having said that, hearing this guy, whoever this guy is, I, I don't know who he is. His tone, the tone of his voice, the way that his voice sounds, based purely on the tone of voice. Very similar to Ronnie James Dio. His pronunciation of words, his vowel formation, very similar to Ronnie James Dio. He's lacking the power and the projection that Ronnie James Dio had. I think he sounds similar but it, it's not the same. And it, it doesn't have the same power, the same projection, the same attitude. That the, the same, and this is going to sound weird, <laughs> but it's the only way I can think of to describe it. The same presence in the voice that Ronnie James Dio had. Like, you would hear Ronnie James Dio singing, you would know that that's RJD. 
without question, that is Ron James Diaz. I'm not saying this guy's doing a bad job. He's not. Okay, this guy's doing a fantastic job. It is, listen, very much like what I said about um, the lead vocalist for Alice in Chains, the, the guy that came in. I think his name's William. Uh, he came in to fill the spot that Lane Staley once held. It's so unfair that there are those purists out there who say, if it ain't Lane Staley, it ain't Alice in Chains. I think that's very unfair. And to some extent, it's very narrow-minded. Will there ever be another Ronnie James Dio? No. Will this guy ever be Ronnie James Dio? No. He's doing the best job that he possibly can. And I got to give him credit. He's doing a fine job. Okay. Will he ever be able to replace Ronnie James Dio? That is impossible. That's like asking William from Alice in Chains to replace Lane Staley. It's, it's impossible. Those are some huge shoes to fill. And this guy is doing the best job he can to fill those shoes. And I listen, I'm giving him all the props and all the credit in the world for doing the best job that he can and doing a bang-up job of tonally sounding like Ronnie James Dio. Doesn't have the same presence, doesn't have the same stage presence, doesn't have the same charisma, doesn't have the same allure, doesn't have the same power and projection, but you know what? He's doing a bang-up job. I'm sorry. I, I know there's going to be people who are going to be those, those purists if it ain't Ronnie James Dio, it ain't Rainbow, you know, whatever. You know, it's kind of like, if it ain't Lane Staley, it ain't, you know, Allison Chains. And, you know, it, it, you, you're going to hear those, okay? You're, you're going to hear, if it ain't Freddie Mercury, it ain't Queen. You know, I'm sorry, but would you rather have those bands just disappear? Would you rather have those bands just disappear off the face of the earth and never, ever be heard from ever again? Or would you rather have somebody come in, do the best job they possibly can, do a bang-up job, do a fantastic job? It's not the same, but you know what? In some regards, maybe, quite possibly, it might even be better. Time will tell on that, okay? But I'd rather have the bands continue. I'd rather have them continue with a new vocalist. I'd rather have them continue to produce some possibly great music. Rather than have them just die out and never have a chance to live, shine, and thrive once again. That's me. That's just how I feel, okay? That's my personal opinion. Disagree with me? Agree with me? That's up to you. That's totally up to you. But that's how I feel. So, I think he's doing a bang-up job. I think he's doing a great job. So, there we go. Anyway, let's... Guitar solo, yes. Hopefully it's not a five minute long guitar solo. We'll see.
boss. <laughs> now I can boss after the guitar solo is done. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, okay. I, there's a lot of points I want to talk about. I'm, I'm gonna just briefly go over each one. Number one, uh, that drummer playing on that stripped down kit. What a great job. That's a sign of a great drummer. Uh, when you could take a stripped down kit like that and make it sound full, you got a good drummer on your hands. And he really is stripped down. He's got snare kick, uh, one single rack tom, a floor tom, and it looks like he's got three cymbals, probably a ride and two crashes, and a hi-hat. That's all he's got. And he's making it sound good. So, yeah, good on him. Really good on him. Uh, number two, keyboard player. Great job with the key with, with the chords. Just nothing but chords. Filling out the sound, keeping everything sounding full, which was really important considering what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, the bass player. Moving around as much as he was, he never took away from the guitar solo. He never was playing too actively that he stole the spotlight off the guitar solo, but he was being very active. Being a bass player myself, I couldn't help but notice what he was doing. And it, man, he was doing some great runs, man. Some fantastic runs. I think. The Mixolydian or Phrygian? It's that Middle Eastern, so I want to say maybe Phrygian dominant. Maybe Phrygian dominant. I, I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say Phrygian dominant. Um, but playing the, the flat two to the four, you know, the flat two. Do, 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 So flat two to major three to four to five to four to major third to flat two to one. Uh, if you do on the fifth, five, six, major seven to the octave to the two. As actually, that would, no, but wait, maybe. Yeah, Phrygian Dominant, I think is the way to go. Um, it sounded really good. He was got some great runs on the on that on that mode, man. Some great stuff he was doing. But all at the same time, like I said, never taking away and distracting from what the lead guitarist was doing. Uh the guitar solo. Great job. I was curious. He had the slide. I didn't realize that was his slide. He had this thing in his mouth. I'm like, he's smoking a cigar or something? What what is that in his mouth? Turns out it's a slide. Okay, so I, I was like, listen, you do what you got to do, man. If you're going to utilize the slide, but not for a while, I mean, there's other things you could do. You could put on a stand or put on, like, you could get a slot on your guitar strap or something like that, but he put it in his mouth. Okay, fine. Listen, you do what you got to do, man. Um, Very tasteful solo. Very well done. I I wasn't sure what I was going to hear from him on the guitar solo. I wasn't sure what to expect. A, a little more stripped down, a little more simplified than I was expecting, but man, tasteful. Very tasteful. Great playing. Um, I was looking at his input. He's got he's got dual XLR input. And I'm really curious as to why. Like what number one, he's using XLR inputs instead of, you know, quarter inch. I'm just sitting here going, I don't think I've ever seen XLR inputs on a guitar before that's interesting and i'm really curious as to why i honestly have no clue i've never seen that before let i've never i've never seen single xlr into a guitar let alone two and one of them is going into some sort of an adapter or something like that maybe it maybe maybe a di i don't i don't know i'm i'm again if anybody knows for certain can you please enlighten me? Because I'm I'm genuinely curious. I'd love to know why. Um, the four instrumentalists, great job, great job. Let's keep going here.
shout out to those two ladies doing the backing vocals. Big shout out to them. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I heard the vocals. I heard them. But my gut instinct told me that was track. I was like, hey, okay, it's backing track. No big deal. Every, every band uses track of some kind. And then I noticed, I didn't see them back there until, I didn't notice them until just now. And I saw them. I'm like, they're singing that live. That's not track. Kudos to them. Seriously, kudos to them. Great job. Accurate, clean, well balanced, not too loud in the mix, just just enough to be present. That set great control. That's why I was like, it's track. And someone's back there on the FOH just making sure it's not too loud in the mix. Nice job. I was gonna give a shout out to the FOH. No. <laughs> shout out to those two ladies. Very nice job. Very nice job. Um I'm enjoying the groove. I'm enjoying the song. We're at 741. If I'm being honest, that feels accurate. It feels like it's been about seven and a half minutes. Um, the song is getting a little repetitive, if I'm being honest here. It, it, we've, been, we've been moving along at the same thing now, the same feel, the, the same vamp for a while now. I'd like to see the song go somewhere else, uh, especially considering the fact we got another two minutes to go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Is that the end? Is that how they're going to end it? They're going to end it on a cliffhanger? Oh, how dare they? And, no, they came back into the main groove, finished strong in the main groove. Nice. Nice. Good, good, solid ending there. Um, There's a lot to talk about. Now, luckily, I talked about most of it during the course of the reaction, so I don't need to go into a long, extensive thing again. I'm going to touch on some bullet points, obviously, but... Uh, I mean, for the most part, I, I said everything I need to say, so I'm not going to say this is going to be a quick review. <laughs> I'm not going to say that because I know how I am and how I have a tendency to go off on tangents. So I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be. I, 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 can, I can guarantee you it ain't going to be a two minute review. I can promise you. I'll try to my best to keep it under 10. I'll, I'll do my best, but I, I can't make any promises. Let me get my thoughts together. I'll do my best to condense it down as much as I can. 
I'll see you in the review, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Richie Blackmore's Rainbow with Stargazer, Memories in Rock. Uh, this was a request from Wencho101, and this was actually Wencho's prioritized request for the month of December for being a silver tier member on the Patreon page. So there you go, Wencho. I hope you enjoyed the show, man. Um, I have a score here. And I, I really had to tread carefully with this score. And, and, and the re look, at, <laughs> before I get ahead of myself, let me give the score first. And then I'll explain what I mean by that. Like I had to tread carefully. Um, but let me get the score first and, I, I, and then I'll explain what I mean by that. On a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give that a 9.1. Yep, 9.1. <laughs> you heard me. I feel great about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? I said I have to tread carefully when I'm giving this score. Because lately, today, just today, I think this is, I, I, I film, I usually do eight videos a day. I usually film eight videos a day and then I edit them and I upload them. Um, the next day, I'm not, I'm not going to edit and film eight videos in a day. That's just way too much work. No, I'll, I'll film eight and then the next day I'll usually edit four and then the next day I'll edit four and upload on those same days. So, you know, I'll get eight, eight videos done over the course of three days. Um, by this is the seventh video I filmed today. And this is, I think, I think this is the third nine I've given today. And I, I don't listen. Folks, I don't just hand out nines. Nines have to be earned, okay? I do not hand out nines lightly or easily. So those nines were all earned. I just don't want people getting the idea that I'm throwing nines out there and I'm being generous. No, not at all. If you're gonna get a nine from me, you'd better damn well believe you're gonna earn that nine. And these guys definitely earned that nine for me today. Um without question but that's why i'm saying though i gotta be careful because i, I don't want to i don't want to come across like i'm just handing out nines like candy on halloween i'm not doing that okay um no i was very impressed with this very impressed um i'm gonna start with the negatives first so i can get the negatives out of the way and i can spend the rest of the time spending on the good stuff i'm gonna be honest with you folks the only negative i have was the length of the song. It was, how long was it? Nine minutes and 53 seconds, something like that. I, let me let me look really quick. Let me see, where is it, where is it? There it is. Let me check out the properties. How long was this? Nine minutes and 56 seconds. So it was basically 10 minutes. And if I'm being honest here, it, it felt like 10 minutes. The time did not fly by. Now, I will also say, the time didn't feel longer. It didn't feel like it was 15 minutes or 18 minutes. It didn't drag, okay? The time felt accurate. It was long, but it felt appropriately long, okay? So th that's really the only beef I have with the song is it, it did feel long. Now, I, I have a question though, in regards to that. The studio version of this song, is it shorter <laughs> and they just made it longer and extended it for the purpose of live play or is the studio version close is the studio version like nine minutes or eight and a half minutes is, is it is it relatively close or is this a five minute song that they turned into a 10 minute song for the purpose of a live concert if you guys could do me a favor, let me know in the comments which one it is. I, I'd appreciate it because it, it would definitely put some context on this. But yeah, I mean, it, listen, it, it's a long song. Yes, it was a long song, but it didn't drag. It didn't feel like it was going along longer than it actually was. It's just the time didn't fly either. It was accurate, so it, it's okay. It's okay. Um, That was it. <laughs> Let's get to all the good stuff now. Um. I already said what I'm gonna say about the lead singer in great detail. So I'm just gonna hit and make this as quick and as short and as endless as I possibly can. 
Is he Ryan James Dio? No, he's not. But he's doing the best he can, and I'm going to tell you right now, I think he did a great job. I really do. Will he ever be Ronnie James Dio? No, he won't. But you know what? His tone was pretty spot on. His diction was spot on. His vowel formation was spot on. He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the projection, granted, that Ronnie James Dio has. He doesn't have the stage presence and the charisma and the pro and, and the stage projector that, that Ronnie James Dio had. Ronnie James Dio just had a presence about him, man. He really did. He would step on stage, and for being a guy who is known as the metal midget, I mean, the I mean, he was a short little dude, but you know what? He would sing, and he would sound like he was six foot eight. I mean, the guy just projected and exuded and had that charisma of just larger than life. You talk about the definition of larger than life? That was Ronnie James Dio. Is this guy it? He doesn't have that, okay? He doesn't have those things, but he does have a lot of great things going for him. And I, I, I'm telling you, if, if people would give this kid a chance, I think they will grow to love him. I really do. There are always going to be those purists out there who are going to say, well, if it ain't RJD, then it ain't Rainbow, you know? And like, if it ain't Lane Staley, then it ain't Alice in Chains. If it ain't Freddie Mercury, then it ain't Queen. Well, you know what? Those close-minded people can see themselves out the door. I I'm serious. I mean, they uh, listen, it's one thing to be a fan of the band. It's a whole other thing to be a fan of an individual within the band. If you're not going to be a fan of the band, then don't don't be a fan. Leave. Get out. Seriously. Give the band a chance to continue to make great music. And that means you got to bring someone else in who's going to do a bang up job. And that's what they're going to do. I would rather have that than have the band die out because the band just didn't want to continue without, you know, and listen, that's their right. If the band does not want to continue, they want to let it die because one of their band members left or one of their band members passed away, then fine. I'll respect that. Let the band make that call, not the fans. Let the band make that call. Let them make that choice and let them find someone who can do a bang up job. Allison Chains did. I've, I haven't seen anything with Queen with their new lead vocal. I, I, Adam, what's his name? I, I haven't seen or heard anything from Queen with their new lead vocals, but I'm sure he's doing a bang up job. They're still going with him, so yeah. And this guy, I thought he did fine. I have no issue with anything he did. I thought he sounded great. So I got no issue with him stepping in and filling those shoes. Those are some big ass shoes to fill. But you know what? He did a great job. I and I'm I know I'm cursing a little bit here, you know, dropping some A bombs and stuff, but you know what? I'm passionate about this. I'm very passionate about, you know, bands bringing in new members and people being so close minded not to give them a chance. I hate that. I really do. So I'm glad to see that these guys are continuing. I'm glad to see that they got a good lead vocalist who is not Ronnie James Dio, but you know what? He sounds really darn good, doesn't he? I think he sounded just fine. Um, That drummer, man, kudos to him. Sounding out the way he did with a stripped down kit the way that he did. Seriously, kick, snare, one rack tom, one floor tom, one ride, two crashes, and a hi-hat. And you know what? He made that thing sound full. He made that thing sound fantastic. And I, I, that's always a sign of a good drummer. When you can have a drummer that comes in and plays on a stripped down kit like that and make it sound like a full blown kit, like, you know, four toms and, you know, eight cymbals and double kick. And, you know, it, you, can, you can make it sound like that with a stripped down kit. You're doing a good job. So the great job to the drummer. Uh, the keyboard player, how tasteful, how very tasteful he was. Doing a great job, man. Uh, filling out the chords, doing in some little melodic lines, one necessary, one needed, and one appropriate. So good on him. Um, getting some great patches too, man. It sounded really nice. The bass player, probably besides the lead vocalist and the guitar, it, it, probably one of the biggest highlights for me. Um, Man, that bass player was tasteful. Whew, man, he was. He was doing some great, great counter-melodic lines to accompany the guitar. 
but never stealing the spotlight away from the guitar. Um, I just noticed it because I'm a bass player. I'm always gonna notice the, the bass players. I mean, I, I'm being a bass player myself. Uh, I love what he was doing, man. Some great walk and work, playing within that mode that he was playing with. And I'm almost positive that was uh, fridgy and dominant. I'm almost positive, but I'm not 100% sure about that. It sounded really good. I absolutely dug it. It felt good. Everything he did was tasteful, fit like a glove. I got absolutely no issue with anything he did at all. Big shout out to those two ladies back there on the backing vocals. Doing such an amazing job with great control, great pitch uh, recognition, uh, great dynamics, uh, and, and great attack. I swear, I thought that was track. I really did. I thought it was either track or maybe keyboard doing a voicing. Nope, it was those two ladies back there doing an outstanding job. So kudos to both of those ladies. Um, the guitar player, I, I believe that is Richie Blackmore, yes. <laughs> um, great solo work, man. Great solo work. Outstanding solo work. Not at all what I was expecting from the guitar solos. I was expecting a little bit more of a shred fest, if I'm being honest. And thankfully, I was denied. Thankfully, I didn't get what I was hoping for because what he did was far better suited to the song. Nothing too overly flashy, nothing too overly complicated. Playing what the song needed from a soloistic standpoint. You would be amazed how many guitars do not, how many guitar players I know and I personally played with fail to grasp that concept and they make their solos all about them and they literally leave the song in the dust as an afterthought. It's a real shame. It is. I mean, listen, those guitar players, not taking anything away from them, they're very talented, very capable, uh, very gifted guitar players who have put years and years and years of work into their craft and I absolutely give them all the credit that they're due. It would just be really nice if sometimes when they were playing guitar solos, they would keep the song in mind with what they were doing and play solos that were conducive to the song. You'd be amazed how I many guitar players don't understand that concept. I've played with a number of them and it is annoying. It is super annoying. Um, he didn't. He played exactly what needed to be played within the context of the song to make the solo sound good and as a result make the song as a whole stronger so kudos to him absolute kudos to him great song fantastic song um i'm glad i got the chance to hear this i may have to do a bit of a deeper dive on rainbow but here's the question do i do it on my own or do i do it in reactions I kind of want to do it now. Listen, I, I'm going to do the same thing I did with my Rush reaction. Uh, I'm going to hold off for now, and I'm going to see if people get on the Patreon page and make requests, okay? I'll give it a month, okay? I, I, I'll give it a month. I'll, I'll give it the entire month of January. I'll, I'll wait until about mid-January, okay? So about mid-January, if I don't see any requests for more Rainbow, I'm just going to go on my own, and I'm just going to dive into them on my own, listen to them on my own, and unfortunately ruin any potential reactions. Now, if people get on the Patreon page and they request more Rainbow, I'll hold off. I'll hold off until I get to those requests. Okay, it's not gonna be easy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like it, but uh, I'll do it for you guys because I'm here for you and I'll do whatever I can to make you guys happy and entertain you guys in any way I possibly can. If that means I gotta hold off, I'll hold off. I'm willing to do it for you guys. But I'm telling you, I'm only giving you until mid-January to get on the Patreon page and make those requests. So, up to you guys. I'm easy either way, all right? Um, now listen, 9.1 is absolutely what I feel this song deserves. Um, now there may be some new people to the channel who have never been here before and are wondering what a 9.1 actually means. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> 9.1 is one of the highest scores you could possibly get on this channel. I score on a scale of one, I, I say one to 10 just for simplicity, but the truth of the matter is, 
I don't give tens because I don't believe in perfection. I, I believe perfection should be something that should always be out of reach, unobtainable to help motivate you and encourage you to reach that next level. Okay, you did this and it's amazing, it's fantastic. Now, what are you gonna do next? How are you gonna beat that? How are you gonna top that? Always be unobtainable, but motivating you to try and achieve it. You know what I mean? That's why I don't give tens. The highest scores I have ever given is a 9.9. .9. I've, I've done that once. And to be honest with you, I don't know if I'll ever do it again. I don't know. Um, but getting a nine from me is not easy. Um, if, you, if you're not sure about that, <laughs> take a look down below in my scoring system chart. It's down below in the description. You'll, you'll find it and you'll see that 9.0 to 9.9 .9 is the grading scale for, what does it say? Amazing, fantastic, outstanding, awesome. That's, that's what it is. And this was definitely that. I do not give nines easily. I don't even give nines. Nines are earned, plain and simple. If you get a nine from me, you earned it. It's uh, it is not something I hand out or give. And I do not give those nines lightly. I take a lot of things into consideration. Um, but if it is earned, I will absolutely give it without hesitation. And they definitely earned that 9.1 for me. So 9.1. Final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for tonight, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.